In my work with schools in England and more broadly, we try and encourage teachers to use what we would call a problem-solving approach. Teachers tend to teach the way that they were taught, and so you have a cycle continue a very traditional practice. And actually, if you walked into most maths classrooms now, they, don't, they wouldn't look that different to classrooms in Victorian days. When I work with teachers, um, I really try to help them um, see that there are different ways of working on mathematics that can be very interesting for students. Good morning everybody and welcome to the University of Sussex. My name's Professor Jo Bowler and today we're going to be doing some maths together. So maths is really sort of all around us in the world, in nature, in art, in all technology. But this is a particularly interesting shape and we have it here in front of you. And what we're going to be thinking about today is how this shape is built, how it's structured. And the question we're going to think about is how could you predict without counting, how would you know without counting how many cubes are in that shape? So if you go back to your groups, um, pick up your bean bags and you can get going. Inquiry-based learning, I think for me, is having students use their own ideas and combine uh, their own thinking with standard mathematical methods. So instead of just being taught standard methods which they practice and reproduce, it's about giving students opportunity to uh, take methods and adapt them and apply them and use them to solve real problems. And in that process, they tend to uh, be able to be a bit more creative and use their own thinking and their own ideas, which is usually much more interesting for them. Why doesn't it work? The equation would be too long. Too long. I like giving students mathematical problems that are visual. That really helps them see standard mathematics. It sort of makes it come alive for them. People have realized for a long time that engaging people actively, getting them thinking and using their own ideas helps them learn. It makes it more interesting for them. But it also shows them something which they may not know, which is that here's this maths problem that can be approached in a whole variety of ways. Uh, legitimately and you can sort of come to the same conclusion but through very different pathways and that's an important message for students. Okay if everybody would like to uh, stop there you've been working fantastically we've got lots of different ideas and different groups so what we're going to do now is have you come up and present some of your ideas so I'd like you to get your posters and your cubes and your bean bags and all come into the central space. Really, I see maths as a way of interpreting and understanding the world. And it's also a form of communication, like mathematics really is a way of representing the world. The way that seashells and uh, pine cones and flowers are constructed all in the same ratio, which is really very interesting in parts of the human body. And so school children often know nothing about that, that maths is represented in nature and the world um, and it's this very varied multi-dimensional subject. So to get the final formula, so it's the two of the, these shapes and then the final n is the height of the column. We thought that each side of these was a triangle so we used a half base. I line. think it's hugely rewarding for teachers and that's usually how you get teachers to use inquiry-based methods is that they try it and they say wow these students are really interested and they're engaged and they're coming up with these great ideas and it's quite a revelation for teachers sometimes. You know it's rewarding to know that you're actually helping people go out and be able to solve problems in the world and they enjoy their learning so I think yeah there's a lot of rewards for teachers. <laughs>